Hello my dear friends from today onwards i will start the cardiovascular pharmacology but before going to the details of the cardiovascular pharmacology i want to discuss in very brief certain commonly used terminologies which will very frequently come while we describe the pharmacological management of the cardiovascular illnesses i myself dr darshan dave and again i want to remind if you have not subscribed my channel pharmacology in simplified way please subscribe and please write your suggestions comments in the comment box now the learning objective is the definition and explanation more important is explanation of the commonly used terminologies in cardiovascular pharmacology and these terminologies are stroke volume ejection fraction cardiac output venous return preload afterload peripheral vascular resistance and refractory period volume what do you mean by stroke volume we all know that heart is continuously automatically contracting so with each stroke the volume that is ejected out that is called the stroke volume so in better term volume of the blood pumped out of the left ventricle during each cardiac contraction or we can say that amount of the blood pumped out of the heart in one cardiac cycle next is the ejection fraction now my dear friends what do you think that some amount of the blood is present in the left ventricle at the end of the diastole and when the aortic wall opens do you think all the blood present into the left ventricle it will be ejected out no some fraction or the better word is percentage of the blood is pumped out into the systemic circulation and that percentage is known as an ejection fraction so ejection fraction is a measurement which is expressed as a percentage that is very important term percentage of how much blood the left ventricle pumps out with each cardiac contraction for example we are commonly uh, came into the encounter of this terminology is that this person is having ejection fraction of 60% or 70% so for example 60% what is the meaning of 60% ejection fraction it means that 60% of the total amount of the blood in the left ventricle is pumped out into the systemic circulation with each cardiac contraction now what is cardiac output cardiac output is nothing but amount of the blood pumped out from the heart means from the left ventricle into the systemic circulation in one minute now again go back to our previous slide stroke volume same amount of the blood pumped out from the left ventricle into the systemic circulation but for the stroke volume it is with each stroke and here one minute and we all know that on an average the heart rate is 72 beats per minute so the heart contracts 72 times in a minute so if we multiply the stroke volume with the heart beat we will find the cardiac output so the cardiac output is equal to stroke volume into the heart rate next is the venous return is the return of the venous blood from the periphery into the right atrium okay as the name itself suggests return of the venous blood from the peripheral circulation into the right atrium and except for a few seconds we can say that this venous return in the normal physiological condition this normal venous return is equal to the cardiac output 
then does very important terminologies my dear friends understand it very carefully pre load load some tension and pre means the load exerted before before what before the heart contracts before the systole of the left ventricle now you all again go back to the uh, your basic of the coronary circulation what happens the venous return that enters into the right atria then right ventricle then left atria then the left atrioventricular wall opens then the blood enters into the left ventricle enters enters and after a period of the time the left atrio uh, the left atrioventricular wall closes now at that time left ventricle acts as a closed chamber here still the aortic wall is not opened the blood is there in the ventricle that blood volume that blood volume in the left ventricle at the end of the diastole it creates a pressure on the ventricular wall the ventricular wall and this pressure can be measured in terms of the stretching of the ventricular wall it means that the more the stretch of the left ventricular wall more will be the pressure and here again understand my dear friends still the aortic wall is not open so heart has yet not start contracting but this load is already on the heart the load is in the terms of the blood that is present into the left ventricle okay that is known as a preload so it is a measure of the degree of the ventricular stretch at the end of the diastole and in a more a systematic way it is also known as a left ventricular and diastolic pressure the pressure of the left ventricle because of the blood filled in the left ventricle at the end of the diastole it is known as an preload now why this slide is there the child is about to start on a road on a flat road with a bag you know that nowadays the heavy school bags it shows that here the child has yet not start walking it means that the aortic wall is yet not opened but the boy is carrying a bag the boy is carrying a load with which it has to walk on the road so that load of that bag before the child starts walking this load of his school bag is known as a preload i think this is clear now the after load after load means load exerted after after what the heart has started contracting it means that now the aortic wall opens the left ventricle ejecting the blood into the systemic circulation now what we feel the left uh, heart is the in the cardiovascular system the heart is the only contractile organ which can push the blood so immediately when the aortic wall opens the blood is ejected into the systemic circulation it is right but it is not like that in the periphery in the um, arterial system there is a vacuum so they allow okay come on all the blood comes into our Uh, system no there is some resistance offered by the arterial tree and with against these resistance left ventricle has to eject the blood and that is known as an afterload so afterload means force against which a ventricle contracts to eject the blood in systemic circulation and it is decided by main two factors one is the vascular resistance you all know the anatomy of the arterial system the muscularis cardiac uh, sorry the muscularis muscle in the vessel wall it exerts a pressure a resistance 
that is vascular resistance by the arterial tree and second is the volume and the viscosity of the blood but this vascular resistance by the arterial tree is the main determinant factor now you can see a figure a person is climbing and the there is a upward slope is there so person has started walking person has already started the walking you look very carefully but he has to walk against a slope okay so the person has started walking means the aortic valve opens and the heart starts contracting ejecting the blood but there is some resistance offered by the peripheral arterial system while in this case by the slope that is known as an afterload and in many of the pathological conditions there is an increased preload as well as afterload and my dear friends the more the preload and the afterload the heart has to work more so over a period of the time the heart enters into the failure that is known as an heart failure okay it can be seen in this figure here now the person is having both preload and afterload preload in terms of luggage is very heavy luggage and afterload in terms of he has to walk against a slope now yes very important term peripheral vascular resistance because in the afterload we have discussed the resistance offered by the peripheral vascular system uh, peripheral vascular tree now what is that so it is the resistance offered to the flow of the blood by the vascular smooth muscle when the blood flows through the arterial system the arterial wall radially creates a pressure or in the another sense it provides resistance better word is it provides resistance to the column of the blood the musculature of the vessel provides resistance to the column of the blood and against this resistance the blood has to flow and this resistance is known as a peripheral vascular resistance now obviously this resistance is dependent on two factors one is the vessel diameter you all know where um, it is very clear that more the vessel diameter the lesser will be the resistance and less the diameter more will be the resistance so any factor which promotes vasoconstriction it will lead to increase peripheral vascular resistance so this is one factor vessel diameter and another is viscosity of blood it also affects the vascular resistance but more most important is this vessel diameter and as i have discussed more the vasoconstriction more will be the peripheral vascular resistance and there are many factors but the most important system in our body which is responsible for the vasoconstriction is the sympathetic nervous system so more the sympathetic nervous system because of the stress or any other means there will be vasoconstriction which lead to increased peripheral vascular resistance and which will lead to various cardiovascular ailments like hypertension angina and in indirectly it may lead to heart failure also now the two terms rep, uh, absolute refractory period and relative refractory period but before understanding these two terms one must have some basic idea about the phases of cardiac action potential in relation to the ion conduction here you can see that in phase 0 there is a rapid upshoot because of the rapid opening of the sodium channel sodium enters and these phase is known as a phase of rapid depolarization this is followed by 
a phase of early rapid repolarization phase 1 in the figure you can see that there is a slight decline and this decline is because of closure of the sodium channel and opening of early transient opening of the potassium channel so it is an early rapid repolarization after this you can see a plateau minor downward deflection this phase is because of the opening of the potassium channel is there but there is a simultaneous opening of the calcium channel and after this phase there is a pro late prolonged repolarization phase because of the opening of two types of potassium channel and finally the phase 4 when the resting potential it means the potential which is there before the hard contracts the same potential again comes and it is with the help of sodium potassium atps pump so these are four phases phase 0 depolarization phase 1 early rapid repolarization phase 2 plateau phase phase 3 late rapid repolarization and phase 4 resting membrane potential now in the heart refractory period means the heart is in the rest refractory means rest now this refractory period is divided into two types one is the absolute refractory period and second is the relative refractory period now what is absolute refractory period it means that whatever will be the stimulus whatever will be the strength of the stimulus the heart cells are not going to be respond okay complete rest so cardiac muscle does not show response to any stimulus and it lasts from phase 0 to half of phase 3 you can see as a line in this figure okay half of phase 3 this is known as an absolute refractory period and second is relative refractory period it means heart is in the resting stage okay with the usual stimulus the heart is not going to be respond but if you give more stronger stimulus so if the strength of the stimulus is increased to maximum then the heart again start responding in terms of the contraction and it extends from second half of the phase 3 to phase 4 now you all feel that why we are discussing this point especially the refractory period of the heart in the cardiovascular pharmacology because whenever you will learn the cardiac arrhythmias this there are many drugs which prolongs the refractory period some drugs affect the relative refractory period of these and these this comes will repeatedly come so for understanding the pharmacotherapy of arrhythmias this termino uh, basic understanding of this terminologies are very important and from this discussion now we will start pharmacotherapy of hypertension okay in each week i will upload at least one lecture but my dear friends again i am repeating if you have yet not subscribe my channel please subscribe the channel pharmacology in simplified way and please share your comments suggestions experiences in the comment box which other lecture do you want which improvisation you required please share okay thanks a lot